Hi guys, Rachel Cook, Doctor of Audiology at Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. And in today's video, I'm gonna be telling you why hearing aids may not be the best treatment option for your hearing loss after all. Coming up. Have you ever had someone tell you something that sounded like it was in an entirely different language, even though it was in your native language? Perhaps you've had someone repeat what they've said three times in a row and still can't quite understand what they're saying. Or maybe you've asked someone to repeat themselves and before they can even begin, their question finally clicked in your head. Many people would assume that persistent miscommunications are due to a hearing loss that requires treatment using hearing aids. It could actually be something else entirely called auditory processing disorder. Auditory processing is the way in which sound from the ears is interpreted by the brain. While it's incredibly common to experience auditory processing difficulties every once in a while, daily trouble could be due to a condition called auditory processing disorder. Auditory processing disorder, or APD, is a neurological condition that impacts the way the brain processes sound. Our ears are used to identify and detect different sounds around us and send them up to the brain for processing. With APD, the ears may be working just fine, but the brain has a really hard time taking that incoming sound and turning it into easily understood speech. This means that most commonly, an individual with APD has normal hearing on an audiogram but considerable difficulty understanding speech in real world scenarios. This can look like difficulty hearing in challenging listening environments, especially those with heavy background noise, a hard time following verbal instructions, and even challenges with language and reading skills. That's why today I'll be telling you more about auditory processing disorder, including who's at risk, how it's diagnosed, and what can be done to manage the symptoms. But before I do that, please take a moment to give this video a thumbs up to bring videos like these to a wider audience. And if you have not yet already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button with notification bell so that you never miss any one of our newly released videos. While anyone can have auditory processing disorder, some groups of individuals are at a higher risk. APD symptoms generally appear in childhood, but are often mistaken for daydreaming, laziness, and inattention. In fact, auditory processing disorder is often confused for attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, although they can certainly co-occur, which can make diagnosis tricky for audiologists who aren't used to working with neurodivergence. APD can also co-occur with other neurodevelopmental disorders, such as specific language impairment and learning disabilities. Some research suggests that persistent middle ear infections in early childhood could also be a sizable risk factor for developing APD. This is because middle ear infections cause temporary hearing loss that can block access to language during critical language learning periods, making it hard to process sounds and speech as you age. Premature birth and brain injuries can also result in a wide variety of sensory processing difficulties, including trouble processing auditory information. APD cannot be diagnosed using a single test. Instead, diagnosis is made through a combination of test results, clinical observations, and the report of your closest family, teachers, or coworkers. It was previously believed that we could not assess children before seven years of age. But because we know that auditory skills can influence literacy skills, it's important to identify these children and get them help as soon as possible. There are now APD tests that can assess children at only three and a half years of age and older, and the future will likely see that age decrease with better tools available. APD testing begins with a lengthy case history, including your own personal report, as well as the observations from the people closest to you. Many individuals with APD experience or have experienced academic performance issues, which may be due to the fact that important details are missed when teaching is delivered in an auditory-only format. But it's also important to note that APD has very little to do with intellectual abilities or effort. In fact, many exhaust themselves trying desperately to keep up with conversation and instructions and handling background noise. These reports are then combined with a comprehensive hearing evaluation by an audiologist who specializes in auditory processing. You cannot skip over this very important detail 
as APD is a very niche field within audiology. Only certain providers have the knowledge and expertise to diagnose and treat this condition. The hearing evaluation may start with standard pure tone testing to rule out any hearing loss that could be causing the hearing difficulties. Now, it's important to note that even researchers who specialize in APD have differing opinions about APD and hearing loss. Some believe that the conditions can co-occur. Others believe that APD can only occur in individuals with normal hearing, and that APD symptoms in those with hearing loss are simply experiencing their hearing loss alone. However, some people report difficulties hearing what they've heard before they even developed a hearing loss. So it's very possible that these conditions can occur together. The testing process for APD that comes after pure tone testing should take no longer than two hours. This test battery includes sections that evaluate the brain's ability to distinguish speech in background noise, separate speech going into each ear, identify subtle differences between similar sounds, and repeat back sequences of spoken words. If a deficit is identified in any of these areas, it tells providers just what part of the processing is not working well and helps to guide treatment recommendations. Treatment for auditory processing disorder is very commonly a multidisciplinary approach involving audiologists, speech language pathologists, teachers, and occupational therapists. One management technique that is almost always recommended is auditory training. Auditory training tasks are activities designed to improve the brain's ability to store spoken information, find ways to fill in for degraded or incomplete speech sounds, and improve processing speed to handle dynamic listening situations. Auditory training can be completed through in-person or computer-based auditory training programs and can greatly reduce auditory processing difficulty. For more information on auditory training, even for those with hearing loss, be sure to check out my deep dive video that I will have linked in the description below. Another similar option is cognitive training designed to strengthen memory and attention, which are both important for understanding speech. Now, even with auditory and cognitive training, many individuals will still require further support to be able to hear and do their very best. One such avenue is through environmental modifications. These include reducing background noise whenever possible, offering closer seating to the source of the sound, making sure verbal and written instructions are available, confirming that a task is understood before beginning, and developing strong communication strategies like getting someone's attention before talking. This management technique often results in classroom or workplace accommodations to ensure that auditory instructions or lessons are fully understood. And in the event that training tasks and environmental modifications are not sufficient, you may consider the use of assistive listening devices or ALDs. Oftentimes, many people with auditory processing disorder can benefit from an increased signal to noise ratio or SNR. This ratio is defined as the level of the sound that you want to hear as compared to the level of surrounding background noise. With a high SNR, the signal is higher than the surrounding background noise, making it much easier to hear and understand what's being said. With a low SNR, the signal can get lost in the background noise, making it much more difficult to understand conversation or follow instructions. Because the real world is noisy, you cannot always achieve a high signal-to-noise ratio. But assistive listening devices can help give speech an extra boost and separate it from surrounding background sounds. ALDs come in many forms, like a microphone with tabletop speakers, hearing aids with low-gain amplification, or a combination of the two called a remote microphone system. A remote microphone is a wireless mic that collects sound near the source and wirelessly transmits that sound into compatible hearing aids. By sending the signal straight to the listener, the sound is not compromised by distance, reverberation, or the surrounding background noise. But just which option would work best for you? Well, it depends on you. When finding ways to manage auditory processing disorder, an individualized approach is crucial to determining which methods will be most effective. This journey is best started alongside a professional who specializes in APD. They can assist you in knowing where to go, who to see, and what needs to be done in order to start seeing some results. If you suspect that you or someone you love is experiencing auditory processing difficulties, then I highly suggest you head on over to APD Support 
APD.com. This website was founded by Dr. Angela Alexander, a leading expert on APD who specializes in its diagnosis and treatment. Over the last few years, she has developed a map of providers who also diagnose and treat this condition so you can find someone you trust near you. APDsupport.com also has personalized computer-based auditory training programs that you can complete on your own schedule to improve your listening and comprehension skills. If you continue to find that spoken conversation leaves you exhausted or that miscommunications just keep happening, it may or may not actually be hearing loss, and you should consider testing for auditory processing disorder. With the right diagnosis, training, and support strategies, you can see an incredible improvement in your listening, understanding, and communication.